All right, guys, here's what I'm thinking with this video. We have to take the chainsaw, go down where the mini is, cut up a lot of the logs we've been stockpiling, um, give it to my friend's brother. That's how he eats his house for the winter. Uh, so we got to hitch up the dump trailer to Zeus. And um, uh, ball's not in there yet. Zeus don't have his balls right now. So what I'm thinking, because I've done this in the past, so to make this video more worthwhile, it's been about a year since we bought the Kaufman 8x16 Deluxe Edition, all the bells and whistles dump trailer. And uh, I'm thinking I'll turn this video into like a, a year review of this trailer. Um, for anybody who's potentially interested in buying one, on the fence about it, looking at different brands, you know. Um, this is something I want you to keep in mind for later in the video. Because at this point, my plan is going to be to um, get this loaded under a time lapse kind of thing. And then uh, after that, I'll talk more while I'm while I'm uh, driving. There's a reason I'm showing you guys some of this stuff. <laughs> so, yeah. So let's get it hitched up. Let's get the saw going. Let's get it loaded. Um. And uh, yeah. It's missing the bungee cord. The tarp's been making a lot of noise, hasn't been going down the road with it. And that would be why, because it's missing the bungee cord that holds it tight on that side. And we don't have a spare. Okay. All right, here we go. All right, so been a while since we uh, since we used this rig. You guys are on um, you're on the big camera now because uh, well, frankly, the GoPro let me down again. So I don't know what happened to the audio in those clips, um, but we're gonna work around it. So it's kind of nice that that happened, I guess because it allows me to keep notes next to me while I'm at my desk and I can fact check some things um, that I was rambling on about in the video. But, so, let me just, um, it's very distracting. I have the screen over here that I can see myself to see if I'm in frame, but if I look at that, I'm not looking at you guys, and that's rude, so I'm going to uh, get rid of the screen and move you a little bit. Okay, so now we can, we can talk, you know, this is nice. All right, so, my poorly written notes. Um, I'd like to give you a little bit of a backstory on the trailer, which basically, what we did was we sold the, um, we sold the international dump truck, and we sold the tri-axle trailer. Uh, we sold that to Chris. We sold the dump truck locally. Um, part of our reasoning for that was the dump truck was, you know, $900 a year to register it. 
Um, plus there's maintenance and upkeep on it, and there's maintenance and upkeep on that trailer. The trailer obviously was a registration fee, and it, um, we had to insure it all. Whereas the dump trailer versus the dump truck, you know, it's that same, it's like 40 bucks to register it a year, uh, which is what we were paying to, re to register that triaxle anyway. Um, it's much less maintenance, it's much less upkeep, it's, it takes up less room, um, you know, we only have an acre and a half here, it's not like we've got a farm or we don't rent a lot space or anything like that. So it's, it looks better as far as neighbors are concerned. Um, and uh, it, it's worked well so far, you know. Um, one of the stipulations we had when we were looking at trailers was that it had to haul a similar amount to that dump truck, which I think if you actually break the numbers down, um, well, let me do that real quick, actually. All right, so I went and I did the math, um, and I also remembered something that that Casey guy from the New York with the skateboard does. He wears the sunglasses so that it's not awkward when he's not looking at, at you, he's looking at the screen next to you. So I'm going to give that a whirl. Um, anywho, so the dump truck was registered to 26,000 pounds. It weighed 14,200 pounds empty, which gave us a payload capacity of 11,800 pounds. The dump trailer is registered to 17,000 pounds with an empty weight of 5,300 pounds, which gives us a payload capacity of 11,700 pounds. So we're 100 pounds less on the dump trailer without factoring in tongue weights and everything. So realistically, I'm gonna call it a wash and say that they're the same. Um, that being said, the Mini's about 8,700-ish pounds. The Bob Kitten's 3,000 pounds soaking wet with concrete in it. Um, so as far as the trailer goes, it can haul both of our equi or both of our machines without issue. Um, so it fits there as well. So in the interest of time, basically the rest of the backstory here is the the trailer is completely optioned out. We got the tarp, we have the upgraded tires, we have the double floor, and um, we got the spare on it. So that qualifies it as a deluxe HD model. Um, we paid, I think, just over $9,000 for that trailer. Brand new with the warranty. Picked it up in, uh, in North Carolina. So, from a maintenance standpoint and from a cost of owning standpoint, in our situation, the dump trailer made more sense than having the dump truck and trailer. Um, you know, it's... Uh, with the weight capacity of that dump truck, it's not like you're going to load it up with material and hold the trailer behind you with the Mini on it to a job site, legally. Um, and quite frankly, the way that truck drove, I wouldn't want to try it anyway because of the brakes. Um, and we'll get to brakes. So that covers uh, the backstory. That covers the cost and the options of that trailer. And um, the only real th other thing I'd like to mention before we get into the real inf real things about the trailer is the paint. Um, the paint on Kaufman trailers sucks. Like, absolutely terrible. Horrible. Um, I got a magnet mount for my GoPro. You know, the, I mean, I granted, I know the GoPro weighs a few tons, but with the magnet mount on the GoPro... And this was the drive home. If you go back to watching the video of selling my trailer to Let's Dig 18, I had the, the GoPro stuck to the tongue of the trailer on the way home doing a time lapse by a magnet. The magnet has a 111 pound pull and it's about the size of a silver dollar. It scratched the hell out of the paint. Brand new trailer. Magnet. Not terrible. Like, you know, not a huge deal. But again, you're buying something brand new. You kind of want it to last, I don't know, at least till you get it home. Um, uh, the, some of these other big companies, they use powder coating. And, um, I mean, I do powder coating, and I know that that magnet doesn't scratch powder coated things. Uh, I know that firsthand. Um, I mean, hell, my excavator's painted. The magnet doesn't scratch that. And that's from the late 90s. So, that's kind of my gripe right off the bat, is... Eh, 
would it really raise the price up that much to just not even powder coat it just put some kind of a high quality paint on it i don't know the uv light or the uv of the sun is really killing the paint on the trailer just from sitting you can see where like i have the chains attached to the top of the tongue you can see where the paint or the paint's faded around it um but the flip side to that is that if something scratches it all i got to do is go to walmart and buy a 99 cent can of gloss black spray paint and psh, 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 look at that it's good as new you know so it's how you want to look at it i guess all right next thing would be the tailgate the tailgate on this trailer is one of the um the two-way it's the uh the bi curious kind it has the barn doors that open out, you know, and it's also got the spreader um, because this represents tailgates. It has the, the the hinge out so you can spread with it, which is very challenging, but it is possible. Um, which we did by, we had them extend the controller harness on it by, I think, 12 feet or something like that was the biggest they can make. Um, and that was like 50 bucks extra. I forgot to mention that. But that makes a big difference when you're trying to actually spread with the thing. So you can't, it doesn't have any kind of electric or air locks. Obviously, you got to unlock it. So you kind of sit in the trailer about 15 feet before you want to spread and you let it go. Hold the button while you're sitting in the driver's seat. And um, once you hear it start dumping, you just kind of give it a abrupt bit of throttle and it kind of kicks the material to the back and you just drive. Um, that being said, on something this small, most people aren't trying to tailgate spread anyway, so it's not really that big of a deal. Um, so the latch for the swing gate is, uh, it leaves a bit to be desired. Um, the walk around in the beginning of this video kind of shows it, you know, you, you pull out this pin and you use that pin again as like a handle to actuate the lock. It's, it could be better. Um, that being said, most of the other companies that we looked at had the exact same design. So, you're not going to get much better. You're going to end up making your own, which is probably what I'll do in the, when I have time. Um, the barn doors, the doors themselves are nice. They're, they're pretty heavy duty. Um, I will say that, you know, we've hauled sand in it and we don't really have much getting by the either set of doors. Um, so that's nice, but the actual metal that they use to make the hinges is a bit flimsy. Uh, not like the barrel part of the hinge, but actually where the, the tab that comes off the barrel of the hinge and welds to the door, that's a bit flimsy. And over time, the doors start to kind of sag down. Um, and they use the same metal for the latching mechanism for the barn door and that kind of loses its shape and it's it's a bit clumsy now um so i'll probably end up bracing them back up and you know again it's not that hard to do but it's also a 2018 model trailer like i don't feel like i should need to do this kind of stuff to it um so that covers that lock oh so when you open the doors on this trailer, uh, the barn doors, that is, they swing back and they have these two pieces of pipe welded, one to the door, one to the trailer, and you drop a pin through it. And, you know, they're very proud of this design uh, for whatever reason. They think this is great. You know, you don't have to worry about the, the doors swinging down when you dump the trailer. It, wonderful. Um, I think a chain would have worked better, personally. You put a chain on a hook. You put a clevis on it, um, carabiner, I don't know. The, uh, the pins they use are a little bit subpar. The handles just kind of break off over time, and we lost one of them already. So I think in the video, if you pay attention after this part when I'm dumping with it, you'll see that I picked the stick up off the ground and shoved it in there to hold the door open. Usually we'll use bungee cords, but I didn't have another one. Um... So, you know, that again, not, they're not big deal breaker items. It's just a bunch of dumb little things where you kind of look at it and you're like, well, I mean, I would have paid another 20 bucks if you just put some chain on there because the chain probably wouldn't have broken. You know, it's, I would have, I wouldn't have mind paying for a little bit more quality in the end, but is what it is. 
So that should basically cover the things in the video that the audio got destroyed on. I'm going to try to use the rest of the clips from that day because I was all fired up and I was thinking more clearer than I am right now. I just woke up a little bit ago having my, uh, my goldfish and chocolate milk breakfast. But I'm going to, well, as I watch through it, if I see that there's anything that is missing or lacking, then I'll come back and we'll address it then. But um, hopefully you enjoy the rest of it. Hopefully you uh, you get something out of this. And if you're seriously considering this trailer, I would ask you to watch until the end. I will talk about if I would buy it again, um, if I think it's worth it, uh, some other companies we looked at. They're just they're things that are worth listening to. Um, spoiler alert, if you're like me, you don't have much time. Yes, I would buy the trailer again. Uh, it does have LED, LED lights all the way around. They are sealed. It's got a sealed wiring harness on it. Um, which is actually it's very nice and when I first got the trailer one of you commented and I'm sorry your name escapes me right now but it's in the trailer it's in the video of selling the triaxle to let's dig if you go back um, one of you guys commented that you have uh, either the same trailer or a similar trailer I forget again but what you did for the fender lights is you made a little angle iron guard for them because if you're getting loaded at the quarry or something like that a lot of times the rocks will fall and they'll break the, the marker lights on the fenders i really like that idea uh, i haven't done it yet i haven't had time but i really like that idea i saved the email you sent me with the pictures and i am going to do that when i do that i'll make a video and i will be sure to give you credit um, but that's something that i think the trailer should have uh, understand why they wouldn't do that you know it's it's not even five dollars an angle iron honestly and it's just, you know it's just easy uh it's not like if i break the light i'm gonna go to kaufman and buy a replacement light for it so it's not like they're gonna make a, a bunch of money on parts on me because the stupid marker light breaks all the time they're just gonna have a pissed off customer with access to a youtube channel but uh i mean what anyway so that covers the lights now the thing that i have been to remember the grease cap on them uh, missing I buy those almost by the case now and we have this, the, the same axles are under our four car trailer we have three of them they're 8,000 pounds considered heavy duty they have big they're big stud I'll give them that um, but for whatever reason just going down the road those stupid little grease caps fly off they don't unthread or unscrew or they don't hit anything. What happens is the way that they're machined and I don't think I have any left, but I think I have a broken one still. Actually, let me rephrase that. I know I don't have any new ones left because I'm waiting for one to come in so I can fix this one. But I think I still have a broken one. If I do, I'll try to get pictures of it. I have pictures of it somewhere because I've emailed the company.
want you to use an electronic grease gun. I use my DeWalt grease gun on it without a problem. Uh, you do not. In half a mile, turn left onto South Valley Forge Road. When you grease them, you don't go full throttle on the grease gun, if you know what I mean. If you have an electric grease gun like a DeWalt or a Milwaukee, it's got a variable speed trigger. You have to go slow. If you just shove grease in that thing with an air gun, an air grease gun, or uh, you know an electric grease gun full bore, you will blow the seal out the back of the hub. Um, you need to go slow, and they, that's why they want you to do it with a, a handgun. You know, just pump it lightly. Turn left onto um, South Valley Forge Road. Because while you're spinning the wheel, it kind of sucks it into the bearings like it's supposed to, and it doesn't blow the seal out the back. Um, so, like, I do take care of these trailers. Um, I do know how to grease them properly. And I still, that plastic cap, it's the threads, the flange area where the, In 3 .3 miles, the turn right onto cap Water end, the nut end of it actually tightens up against the hub to where the threads are on the cap is too thin. So as you go down the road, if it's a vibration or a bump or something, puts a stress crack in it and then a centrifugal force just rips it off. Because I've watched them in the mirror as I'm driving down the turnpike just go flying off on the four car. Um, and, you know, like I said, I'm not hitting anything. If I hit something with it and it broke off, I absolutely, you know, I understand. But just driving down the road and, I mean, the dump trailer, the, the four car trailer's probably only got eight, eh, probably 7,000 miles on it since we bought it and there's no excuse for that we've we've re replaced it at least four times um so that's my rant about the axles on this trailer and the other thing to do with the axles is the brakes the brakes are absolutely atrocious on this trailer and the four car trailer these axles are just terrible all the way around now the two car trailer we had the flatbed um that had the dually, the tandem dualies under it, and they were the same brand axle, but they were a much heavier duty version of it. They were oil bath axles. They weren't, you know, um, they weren't greased axles. But those were really nice, and the brakes on them were phenomenal, and they were huge too, by the way. Um, but the brakes on these these axles, they're tiny. You know, they're eight thousand pound axles, apparently. But I'll tell you, with just the Mini in here, which is 8,600 pounds or something like that. So just the Mini in this trailer is, you know, the, the, the brakes suck. Um, I don't mind driving it with Zeus because Zeus is rated for much more weight than this. And Zeus has the exhaust brake, which I'm, you know, currently using, uh, which is great. But I will tell you with Ashton's tr uh, truck, or Wifey Works a Lot's truck, with Athena, um, you know, there's sometimes if you're going down a hill where it's a little sketchy and I don't think that's good. I don't think that's right. Some people pay good money for these trailers. You know, they expect a certain product. They expect a certain quality. And I feel that the trailer falls short right there. You know, I feel that they've saved a little bit of money, but not putting in the name brand Dexter axles. And believe me, I'm not the world's biggest fanboy for Dexter because we put Dexter axles under the horse trailer and they're expensive as hell for no reason whatsoever um, and I don't think that they're you know built phenomenal or anything like that I just I do think that they are built much better than whatever axles are going underneath these things um, and you know I, I have called about the warranty and it's you know we'll send pictures and you just go back and forth back and forth and Oh, that's the manufacturer. Oh, you got to talk to Kaufman. Or, oh, it's so freaking annoying. And when you're trying to run a business, you can't have the trailer down for, you know, weeks at a time while you're waiting on a warranty claim for a $35 grease cap. Um, now, when you have to spend $430 to get a case of them and ship it, you know, that's, that's a little annoying, I will say. Um, but still, it's, you, you know, you either park the truck for how long or you pony up and just buy it. And that's why we bought so many of them to have them on the shelf because they were just going left and right. Um, I guess the uh, big question here is would I buy this trailer again? And, um, you know, after thinking.
thinking about it, I, I do think that the answer here is yes. Yes, I would. I would buy this trailer again. Uh, I would absolutely buy the Kaufman dump trailer. We've seen a couple big Texas. We've seen a couple Gators. Uh, one or two PJs. You know, and I'm not the biggest problem I have with them is I'm not impressed with the manufacturing of them. They're using much thinner metal. Their welds are god awful. Uh, some places where you can blatantly see the weld is cold. You know, it's and I'm not talking about like underneath the thing here. I'm talking about on the freaking tongue of it, like the, the big ass metal thing that's in your face when you walk up to it. You would think that if that's their quality control. In one mile. Turn right onto Water Street Road. What the hell's the rest of the thing look like? You know, like if the the piece, the piece that everybody sees right away when they walk up to this trailer looks atrocious, what's the rest of it look like? And that's that's kind of how I feel about those. So, you know, I looked at these. We looked at this trailer inside and out before we ordered it. Um, I'm sorry, before we paid for it, we ordered it kind of sight unseen. Because we couldn't find one around here that we liked and I knew we were going to North Carolina anyway to sell the trailer to Chris so kind of figured why not just you know run down there the plants not too far from him so we picked it up and that's the other thing with Kaufman too uh, Kaufman doesn't have dealers you deal directly with them and they say that's why their prices are so good and I do believe that um, but if you have a warranty claim Guess where you gotta take the trailer? If it's something serious, you know? Guess where it's gotta go? Now, I will say their delivery fees are reasonable. If you buy a new one and you don't wanna drive out to North Carolina, or I forget where their other plan is, um, but it's not far from North Carolina. Um, if you don't wanna drive out there, they will deliver your trailer, and it's, it's just an affordable fee. Um, I think uh, Big Head got a quote on a trailer a while back, just like toying around, and it was, Right Seriously, it's a couple hundred road. dollars, you know, to go that far. So it's not a, a deal breaker. Um, a lot of people don't like the no dealer thing, but me personally, I, I could care less because most dealers are a bunch of. No, I can't say in that word. Most dealers are a Turn left. pain in the butt anyway. So what does it really matter, you know? But um, all in all, yes, I would buy the trailer again. Probably do a little bit more of an or put a more effort into trying to find one used because if I could pick one up used for like six grand maybe and spend the three grand myself on a nice set of axles for it, swap them out, I'd be really happy because I can deal with everything else that's wrong with this trailer, but I absolutely hate these axles and I will be switching them uh, more than likely to a set of Dexter's. Because they're readily available, I, uh, there's there are places around me that I can pick them up locally. I can get parts for them locally. Which is the other thing uh, that I forgot to mention: the threads on that cap that keeps breaking are metric. So no trailer place near me stocks them. Uh, they all stock the, the generic ones that have standard threads that go on the Dexters and the, look, the the other clones of the Dexters. These threads are completely different. Um, so. I'm thinking if I get time, the video that I'll do would be to machine some aluminum ones for it. Um, because, like I said, we don't use this trailer much anymore um, since stopping the earthwork business. And at the end of the day, it's not worth, you know, it'd be about $3,200 to put a nice set of axles under it. So... You know, I got a, a bunch of aluminum stock laying around that I'm sure I can turn into grease caps. So we'll see. But yeah. In one mile. So, uh, turn left. we're almost there. A couple minutes away. You know, I hope, uh, I hope this video helps somebody. Um, if they're looking at these trailers, don't be scared of it. But know what you're buying. You know, know what you're getting into before you get into it. And that'll, that'll make all the difference. So, yeah. If anyone's thinking about buying one, drop a comment. You know, if you have questions, I'll answer any questions that I possibly can. So, yeah, I'll uh, show you guys dumping this, and then I'm going to get back home because i got to get there before the uh, masonry guy gets there. Yeah. 
There's no excuse for this. What do they expect people to strap stuff down with? So this is the scissor lift um, with the hydraulic cylinder in it and basically when this is in the all the way down collapse position this hinge pin sits in that cradle right there and this cylinder is actually completely horizontal so it has to put an extreme amount of force to get it past going trying to do this and get it to kind of uh, open up the scissor basically if that makes sense and you know is there a better design in this? Kind of. Uh, is it likely that they're going to put a multi-stage cylinder inside of a dump trailer? No. But it would be nice. But again, the frame is thick. C-channel. It is reinforced. Um, all the way around. It's got the channel, uh, all the wiring, like I said, sealed. You know, here's the crappy axles. But, um body of it's and it's nice I mean, it's a nice trailer it really is but the welds are good all the way welded on both sides as it should be all the way around it's not stitched together it's a full weld it's got full penetration uh the cross members are beefy you know it's it's nice oh and last thing for real this time the jack it's a nice jack it's got a, a droppable leg it's spring loaded or whatever but you cannot get this trailer with a two-speed jack. I tried like heck. Uh, I offered, you know, I was like, I don't care how much it costs, just put one on there, because this thing is a nightmare to crank up and down. It is so annoying. They have a they have a handful of trailers at Kaufman that they will offer with a two-speed jack, and none of the trailers that I have would they would put one on. So yay. Um, all right, this time for real.